welcome back all of you to the post season now the 2025 season um obviously we're in the wild card here with the orioles if you did miss the last episode i would recommend going back and watching it i mean obviously you know we're in the playoffs now but um it really was quite eventful in terms of yeah, our team absolutely fell off from where we're at you know starting the season um but we managed to just sneak into the playoffs and we're in the wild card round against baltimore so um you know, this episode, we're going to jump through, we're going to play the playoffs, um, finish out the postseason, and um, then we'll probably give us a sort of season overview of sort of, you know, where we're at, and then make our plans for the off offseason. Um, realistically, in terms of, you know, how how players have done this season, Zach Jackson's had a bit of a, I say that, his fit minus is actually above average, his ERA, he's been let down by the fielding and the Babbitt Pirelli here, it's been a lot higher than it has been previously, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to get into things there. We'll have a quick look at the uh, regular season statistics, see how players got on. As you see, um, I mean, Michael Harris is way out, you know, leading in war here. Um, 9.7 more of a 158 OPS plus, which is massive. Um, great season from him. Um, Vladimir Guerrero led the league in home runs. You've got Nolan Gorman there as well. Um, average, you got Harris. Brian Reynolds is looking really, really good. Um, 167 OPS plus from him. Um, in terms of some of the other players in the war leaderboards, you know, you've got Julio Rodriguez, um, Carlos Correa, um, Adley Rushman, Zach Veen, Corbin Carroll, Oswald Peraza as well. Um, so you're seeing a lot of sort of younger players come up and really, really performing. Jose Maria's is great again. Um, but that's really, really good to see in regards to that. Have a little look. Is there any OPS plus? Ryan Reynolds led the league in OPS plus here. Um, Mike Harris was second. Juan Soto was third. Um, Ali Rushman was on there as well. George Valera here as well. He seems like a great hitter. And then in terms of our pitching leaders... Yilbert Diaz um, put the most war and the best fit minus in the league. Uh, lowest home runs per nine as well. Um, so great, great season for him. It seems like he just really came out of nowhere. He was a 2021 international free agent signing. Um, as an all-star as well this year, you got Spencer Strider, Kodai Senga, Zach Gallen, um, Carlos Rodon, Garrett Cole. All the names you sort of would expect to see really here. I mean, Kodai Senga, that's great from him. But... Um, he led the league in ERA as well. Um, but really, really see Yilba Diaz, you know, putting up that war in the fit minus he put up is exceptional. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to jump really sort of straight into the playoffs and get that over and done with. Hopefully we can make a run. Um, obviously, we've got Baltimore to start off with. So if we get up to the first game in a couple of days, I do need to go through through and make sure my players playoff roster is set the aviators swept round one so they're in the playoffs they won their division actually which is good to see obviously our our um my league organization is looking absolutely phenomenal now you know we've got so many players i mean lorenzo carrier here up to 80 potential purple 142 ops plus and triple a 174 in high A, 164 in able, all over one year. You know, he's looking like a you know future um multiple all star winner, really. I mean, with that potential, 80 potential here, and this batting profile, he's going to hit a lot of home runs. So uh, he's someone you would expect to see in the lineup in the foreseeable future. Um, Paulino as well hasn't developed as much as we like, but he's still got that potential there. He's still the number nine prospect in baseball. Um, and if we go to the mine leagues as well, you know, our, our Dominican Rookie League team has got so much potential. Yes, the Mercedes is starting to develop as well now. Um, obviously, he can play centre field as well, which is great. And then Mullinax as well, another centre fielder, another capable centre fielder here. So we've got options there. We've got Husman, um, Ojeda as well here. Um, really, really good outfield options. David Cambrellan as well down here. But, um... I say outfield options, we got even more here. I mean, Dylan Adkins is looking great. He's starting to develop. Um, didn't have a great season, though. Luke Papano did have a great season with a 136 OPS plus. And um, 
it's got great great batting potential here so um it's really really good to see but um we've got so much development sort of going on in our mind leagues um, I would imagine we are we have the best we only have the seventh best mind league system now but um realistically I would imagine when it comes right Lorenzo Carrier has to be higher than 73rd um some of these guys are going to jump up we have so much potential in our mind league system I wouldn't be surprised if we do jump up and back up into the top five at least. I'm very, very happy with where our mining system is at. Obviously, it did drop off. Obviously, bringing in Isilo, I mean, Helvis Del Rosario as well, and also um, Carlos Montgomery, who is still in the injured list. He will be out for at least the first series in the playoffs. Potentially, we could bring him back in, but I don't know if that would be a good decision to do so. But, um, so... Anyway, so we jump into our lineup. So as far as that, our lineup doesn't seem to have been um, really effective. We don't want to go with a form. Let's go with three-man rotation here and ask him for the bullpen. So he wants Salinas to... He's had some above-league average FIP, but you know what? I'll let the manager decide that. Because Zach Jackson hasn't had as good of a year as we would have hoped. He said the worst ERA in our bullpen here. Um, but they think we should go with Z Zylo, JP Sears and Juelvis Del Rosario as our starters. Waterchuck's been chucked out. Um, so who is it who's not making it? So if I jump back in, so we have 28 man roster, so there's two players who haven't made it. You know, I'm unsure, I think Grant Holman didn't make it through, which I'm okay with, he hasn't had a great season, and as far as I'm aware, outside of that, uh, Gardea. I do think, okay, actually, you know what? As much as he is a great, great, great pitcher here, he hasn't been very, very good um, sort of to end the season when he's came up. So probably I will leave him out, at least for the playoffs, and we'll go with players who at least been, been playing well. Our lineup doesn't seem to have been touched, which is great. So I'm just ready to get straight into it. We're up against Brandon Woodruff, the first game with J.P. Sears. Um... Massive, massive game, really. I mean, we have to, we really want to be beating the Baltimore Royals here. So let's jump straight into game one here. So JP Sears up against Brandon Woodruff. And a 4-3 win, which is massive. So, 4-3 opener. JP Sears threw seven innings with five hits. Well-timed hit by Jack Moss to capture the win. In the top of the sixth, run scoring double. Okay, he gave up two runs over seven innings, which is a good, you know, only two runs given up over seven. To pitch that long is great, and it's actually going to come come in handy along the rest of this series, actually, because we've saved a lot of stamina within our bullpen. Zara Pacheco hit a home run, double for Bellinger, Workman, Moss. Um, the RB, two RBIs for Pacheco and an RBI for Susak as well. Great, great, great to see. First first game, first win. And we're up against Grayson Rodriguez here who hasn't had a good season. As much as he was a top prospect who's came up. And we got Isaiah Lowe who has had a great season. And he is realistically an even better prospect. I say that. Um, Grayson Ros Rodriguez was a top, top prospect. But... um. He does have five pitches. Wow, okay. But, um, obviously, Azilo's three pitches here are outstanding. So, you know, all three could be potentially an 80. He's only 22 years of age. In his first playoff game, first playoff start up against Grayson Rodriguez here, we need the win. And we get it. So, he swept the Orioles... When the first, I say swept, we only had to win the two games out of the three. So a 5-1 win. Five one. Led in the series by Workman, who was named MVP on the series. 
he hit 444 with one home run. He obviously hit a home run this game. Home runs for Doyle, home run for Workman, RBI, two RBI again for Pacheco, who's played really, really well, actually. He's got four RBI over the first couple of games. Nine hits given up by low, over 7.1 innings he pitched. And only one run given up. Wow. Okay. What a game. Great to see. So we're up against now the Minnesota Twins. And with this, I actually think I'm not going to go with a pitching rotation of three. I'm going to go with a four-man rotation, I think. And let's... And they add back in... So Grant Holman was in. I'm unsure who was taken out. But um, I don't mind, obviously, given <laughs> those first the, how those first three games went. I'm very, very happy um, with that. So... So we jump into the first game tomorrow up against Joe Ryan. And we got Juelvis Del Rosario pitching. So Joe Ryan's gone 15-8 this year with a 2.82 ERA. And he's been fantastic. The ratings don't show it. But, you know, if he's performing, that's all they can hope for. Obviously, the Twins here do look like a very, very good team. Let's go and have a little look at them here. Minnesota Twins. Obviously, we know they had Carlos Correa, who's had a great, great season for them. 7.5 or 131 OPS plus. Great, great year for him. Joe Ryan, they got Byron Buxton still. Has he been consi consistent year to year? Yeah, he's been pretty good year on, year out. Other than 2023, actually, he was pretty poor. You know, below, below league average OPS plus, but he's picked it back up the last couple of seasons. This is his best season throughout our playthrough, at least. Um... Christian Vasquez, um, they've got Ian Happ, how's he been doing? Okay. Manuel Rodriguez looks very, very good since he's only played 19 games, but he's had a 193 OPS plus. Top prospect they brought up, 80 th 86th rank prospect in MLB, and he's came up and been phenomenal for them here. Um, Jose Miranda... 113 OPS plus. Brooks Lee, obviously we've seen him before. Not had a great season this year. Last year he did win the MVP. So you've got the 2024 AL MVP. Uh, Brooks Lee, who's had a bit of an off season this year. Tailed off a little bit. But they've also got Royce Lewis at third base. Who, <laughs> they've got a really, really good lineup. But um, so do we, if I'm honest. Um, this may be the best team we'll have to come up against. They've been first in starters ERA, first in bullpen ERA, second in fit, first in pitch and war, third in run so third in runs scored and first in runs against. Very, very tough team to come up against here. But um If you want to win, you've got to beat them all. So hopefully we can do this. We've got Helvis Del Rosario pitch pitching first. He has had a bit above league um average FIP. But the Babip has been really, really unlucky with the Babip so far. So, you know, if he keeps pitching, realistically, he should improve. Um, but also, I will say, you know, he's not even close to his potential. I don't see where this potential is going to come from, though. He's at 45 overall with an 80 potential, but it doesn't seem to look like anything will develop from here on out. So, obviously, we brought him up. But, um... OSA seems to think his control and stuff will improve, but they also think his movement is lower. So, Joe Ryan versus Helvis Del Rosario pitching up against each other for the first game here. And a 6 2 loss. Wow, okay. Right, so how did that happen? Sent. Twin centre field, Byron Buxton was 1 for 3 of a home run, adding 2 RBI. So Elvis Del Rosario gave up 5 runs. Wow, okay, with 2 home runs. It's his responsibility for that loss, if I'm honest. He, he is the reason we got we we lost that first game there. 
We got Grant Holman pitching second. You know what? I don't feel very good about. I feel we got two very strong pitchers in JP Sears and Azilo, but Grant Holman and Del Rosario are a bit iffy here. So obviously we got Montgomery injured, which is a real shame. But um, hopefully we can get ourselves through this series. So we got Ronnie Hernan Ronnie Henriquez, sorry, up against next, who's had a fifty nine fit minus this year, but he's only played fifteen games. Um. Wow, okay. Very tough match up here, but hopefully our bats can prevail and Holman can pitch a good game here. 5-3 win. Fantastic, okay. That's exactly what we wanted. Third baseman leading the charge. He's one for one with four walks. Timely hit from Zach Geloff to hit the win. Was that in the seventh? Yep, seventh inning. Run scoring double. It's only hit. Play hard and one, Chapman said. RBI for Workman with two hits. RBI for Pacheco again. He seems to be driving in so many runners here, which is really, really good to see. Um, Susak had two hits and an RBI. Um... Wow, so JPC is pitching next. Okay, Zylo, thank God. I really would would have liked for it to have been a Zylo because if we come to sort of a game deciding, um, like one game deciding sort of um, a series deciding game. Sorry, uh, I would like a Zylo to be pitching. So we want him in as soon as possible here, which is great. So up against Chris Paddock. Who again has been a little above league average with an 88 FIP, 3.4 WAR, great control. Doesn't walk a lot of a lot of batters here. Only 1.6 batters walk per nine. He doesn't strike out a lot either though. Um, we got Zylo pitching up against him. I expect him to have a great game. Go deep into the game. Oh, now I said that he won't, but um, come on. 7-2 win. We scored three runs in the first inning. Matt Chapman did some major damage. About two home runs, drove him five runs and scored twice. A three run, he hit a three run home run off Chris Paddock in the first inning. He had five RBI for Chapman, who basically single handedly won us this game. Um couple of hits for Hanaya, a couple of hits for Ch obviously the two home runs for Chapman. Um, is Ilo one run given up over 5.2 innings, which I'm more than happy with. Junga came in, gave up no runs. Morahan pitched two innings at the end of the game, 2.1 for a hit and a run. I'm assuming that was just a home run. Yeah, they hit two home runs and got us this save. So we're two and up and we're up against Bailey Ober next. Who again has been around league average FIP, but Lower Babip had good fielding around him, 2.6 war. But he does seem to give up. Yeah, his moment movement's a little bit lower than you would like. And we got JP Sears pitching up against him, who's been unlucky with the Babip this year. Hasn't had good defence around him, but he's pitched above league average. And he's pitched so well. I mean I say pitched well in that first playoff game so far. So I'm hoping he can pitch well enough to get us the win here up against Bailey Ober. Three nil win and we're through and we have won the divisional series. I believe it's the divisional series. <laughs> um Yeah, the division series. Wow, okay, so this is a great playoff run. We're going on a great playoff run. This is all we wanted, really, to have this this early as well, which is, is really, really great to see. We gave up zero runs. Only two hits over the whole game there. Little quote from Susak, who's hit 400 with a 471 on base percentage over the series. Our players seem to be performing really, really well. Susak had three hits, two RBIs that game. RBI for Schofield Sam as well. Home run for Susak. 
triple for Doyle, double for Workman. JP Sears came in and gave up two hits and only pitched 2.2 innings, which is very, very odd. But um, obviously the strength of our bullpen, which would be really improved over the years, came in. Mejia pitched two innings. Junga pitched over an inning. Lucas pitched over an inning. Salinas pitched an inning. We have no hits given up by a bullpen there. Two Just two walks for Mejia. But um, great, great game. A bit to the point about, I don't know what happened. Oh yeah, back spasms. Maybe that was why. But um, so we get the win. And... Um, we won the win the division series. International amateur free agents have been revealed. Is it usually this early? So that's something we will have to scout by the end of the month. But you know, more importantly, we've got the playoffs still going on here. So we're either going to be up against the Angels or the Yankees here. Would be nice to be up against the Angels, obviously in our division, little divisional matchup for the League Championship Series. The Reds have been beat, defeated by the Padres, and the Mets have already beaten the Diamondbacks on the other side. So Montgomery's back, and you know what? I'm going to take a massive risk here. I mean, Garde isn't playing anyway, so I can bring him in. And then in terms of our playoff roster. I do want JP Sears. I'm thinking of taking Grant Holman out. Then I'm going to add Montgomery here. And hopefully I don't <laughs> come to regret that decision. Um, Carson Montgomery, Del Rosario, Lowe and JP Sears. That is, you know, a rotation I'm a lot happier with there. I mean, Grant Holman is a great fifth starter, don't get me wrong. But um, heading into the playoffs here, I really would like... To be a little bit stronger, and we're up against the Yankees. Okay, wow. So, the Oakland Athletics up against the Yankees in the league series here. I mean, it's the you know the small <laughs> the smallest franchise with the least money. I mean, I say that now they haven't got the highest budget. But realistically, they are the biggest franchise. The highest payroll, player payroll, actually. Do have the highest player payroll up against the team here. With as much as, yes, we do have a little bit of a higher budget here. Now, we are still closer to the floor. We do have the lowest player payroll. So, it's the lowest player payroll up against the highest player payroll here in the League Championship Series. And the Yankees, in terms of their team and how it's looking. We've got Anthony Volpe leading off. Who's a great, great hitter who's had a terrible year. Um, but he is a captain. Great option for them to have. I did get a comment actually about potentially, you know, realistically I should look to add a captain. That's something I definitely will be doing for next year. Um, and hopefully that have, you know, stave off us just, you know, falling apart for a month. Um, so I will be looking to do that. Aaron Judge as well has not been his usual self. He, you know, he's got a 116 OPS plus, so he's been good, but he hasn't been what Aaron, where Aaron Judge should be, um, which is great to see heading into this. Spencer Jones as well, 115 OPS plus, 80 potential, great, great hitter here. Um, you got Edwin Rios in DH, good power hitter, 130 OPS plus. Giancarlo Stanton. Awful, one point, minus 1.5 war this year. Ozil Prado has obviously been great. 122 OPS plus with 6 war. DJ LeMayhew, 2.5 war. Antonio Gomez, Harrison Bader as well. Being below average, but he's putting up, you know, he's got fantastic centre field defence. He's still got, obviously, Garrett Cole, 4.5 war. Great fit minus. 
been below league average, been unlucky with the FIP and the defence. Um, Nesta Cortez, above league average. Carlos Radon as well, um, above league average FIP and ERA plus. A little bit worse um, ERA plus, being a bit unlucky with the BABIP. Um, and Aaron Nola as well as their fourth starter. <laughs> so they've got Aaron Nola as their fourth starter here, which is absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon, Nesta Cortez, and Aaron Nola are their four starts, and they got Frankie Montas in a setup role. He's way too good for that, and they're paying him twenty million this year to be a setup, a setup man, which is absolutely crazy. You got Michael King as well, who's tied up to a long contract. Team friendly deal, really. I mean, I know he's a closer, but he realistically uh, his stamina has fallen off a little bit, actually. Um, but you know, I'm more than happy with our team. You know, going into this, it's not like we don't have strength. And obviously, we have Hanaya's leading off, who's a great one, two, three OPS plus, great, great hit. We got Gage Workman playing fantastic shortstop defense. Hit has great bat. We got Jack Moss. As well, Pacheco is really starting to perform. He's got the rating, starting to perform over these playoffs. Matt Chapman, Cody Bellinger, Sue Sack, Schofield Sam, Brenton Doyle. And then our pitching, as much as it's very young, obviously with Isaiah Lowe, Dal Rosario, Montgomery. We've also got JP Sears, who's a former All-Star. And um, yeah, I'm very, very happy uh, with this team going into the playoffs against the Yankees here. So the first game is Zylo up against Carlos Rodon. Um, yeah, it's just we got to hope that our players perform as they have been throughout these playoffs, and we can get the win. So first game, and we get a five, and it's a five-one loss up against Rodon. Spencer Jones went three for four with a home run. Five runs, all five runs given up by Zylo, who only pitched three innings. The bullpen pay came in with, and was great. It's a real shame to see there was Zylo. Um, we got to move on from that. We got up against Nesta Cortez next, and we've got Juelvis Del Rosario starting, who has been cold. Maybe I should have brought. Moved him out of the starting rotation and brought um obviously Grant Holman in and left him in, but um he's got all the potential in the world. I do believe he can perform, so let's just hope he can up against Nesta Cortez here. And it's an eight-one loss, so it doesn't seem like he had a great game. Five runs given up. Mejia also gave up three runs as well. Wow. Okay. Cortez had a great game, 7.2 innings, only one run given up. Right, Carson Montgomery coming back for his first game, and it's up against Garrett Cole, and it's a massive, massive game here. We need him to get the win, or, you know, we're 3-1, 3-0 down then against the Yankees, and it's all but over. So, I'm really, really hoping we can pull this off. Carson Montgomery was hot before he came back from injury. So I don't know why that stayed there. Um, he hasn't played in a little while. Um, but let's hope we can get the win here. 4-3 win. Fantastic. Bringing back Carson Montgomery was, was a great decision. I mean, he gave up three runs <laughs> over five innings. But it was enough. We hit. Wow, okay. It was a blown save from Michael King. Who they gave a long contract out to. We hit f three runs in the eighth inning. And they scored none in the ninth. So we won the game. Fantastic. Two RBI for Jack Moss. Two RBI for Susak, who's having a great playoffs. Um, Jack Moss with a home run there. Workman double and a Jack Moss double. And now it's... All on JP Sears here up against Aaron Nola, who's another great pitcher. Their pitch starting rotation is fantastic. Um, let's hope we can get the win here. Right, come on, JP Sears. 
and it's an 8-6 loss. Okay, so it's all <laughs> we've been at. Okay, so we're 3-1 down in the series now, unfortunately. We're still in the playoffs, in AAA, in AAA playoffs, I think, aren't we? Or is that finished now? Is that just the awards? Where well, Davidson Los Santos, I think, won the award for the best. For the MVP in AAA. At least uh, the Pacific Coast League. It's quite cool to see. James Altman's still down there. Had a great year in AAA. Um, anyway. No, none of that matters now because we've got... We're still in this series up against the Yankees. And it's us up against Carlos Redon with Azilo. Where he needs to, you know, make good on that previous performance he had. He was horrific. He's hoping he can turn it around. He's up against Carlos Redon, who's having a great year. <laughs> so, not... Not the greatest opponent to be facing here. And obviously they've got so much power in their lineup, but they move Frankie Montas into actually into starting role. Can we get the win here, please? Two one win. Azilo's obviously had a great game, so we've only given up one run. Six innings, six hits, one run. Adam Lucas has came in for Twitch two innings with no runs, no hits. Same with Salinas got the save with no hits given up. Max Muncy came in and actually got a home run. Um, Bellinger with the double. Quite an unorthodox couple of players who's, <laughs> who's got us the win there, really, with uh, um, Bellinger and Muncy. Um, but, yeah. Two RBIs for a pinch hit for Max Muncy. In the seventh inning, after we were 1-0 down. So, the only awful thing now is, is but there's a lot of potential to, for a former A, a former athletics starter in Frankie Montas, to knock us out of the playoffs for the Yankees here. <laughs> Which would be an absolute disaster if a former A knocks us out. Something you don't want to see, by any means. Do I want Juelvis de Rosario pitching, though? His FIP minus has been above league average. I don't know about the play. I mean, the playoffs, he's been awful over two games. And he is cold. You know what? I'm going to... I'm going to remove... Well, was Derrizo off the playoff roster. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to move up. Oh, I can't do that. So, can I not put him back in? Okay, that is... Okay, I'm not going to lie. That is... A sh that is an awful bug. Is obviously a rule I didn't know about. But, um... The fact that it lets us take him out, but then we can't put him back in. Oh, I, it doesn't. It hasn't taken him out, by the looks of it. Okay. Okay. So is he? Is he? He's slightly tired. Damn. Um. What about JP Sears? He's forty-two percent tired. Forty-two percent. First there is Zara is hundred percent rested. Twenty one percent he's exhausted. He's slightly tired. I'm gonna have to pay how I was Dara Zaro, unfortunately. Maybe I should have took him out before this series. But we're up against the former A in Frankie Montas. Please can we get the win? He's fifteen and eight this year for the Yankees. Come on. I didn't have a 12 runs given up. However, Star Rosario is, has been awful. Why on earth did I keep him in? Why on earth did I keep him in? It's not even him, to be honest, actually. He gave up four runs in two... Uh, he gave up four runs in the first two innings, and all of the that just sent us on. 
we had a blown save from Morahon as well, who gave up four runs. We still could have won the game. We gave up six runs to the Yankees in the eighth inning. We were 7-6 up. You know what? I cannot fault our hitting in any way whatsoever. Our pitching has seriously let us down. Morahon, Lucas, Del Rosario have let us down when it's mattered most. And we've been beaten by a former A in Frankie Montas, who did give up six runs and 12 hits against us in three innings. Um, I'm very disappointed by that. I thought we we there's a lot of potential for us to make the World Series there, and I'm very disappointed how it's turned out. Um. Well, okay. Not very very happy. Not not happy about that at all. So what I will do is we will skip. I will skip through to see who's won the playoffs and then I'll skip through to the awards as well. And then we'll sort of probably go for a little overview, what we're sort of looking to achieve over the off season. And then we'll probably end the episode there, but very, <laughs> very disappointed. We weren't able to make it to the world series there. Obviously we're up, you know, we're the lowest payroll team up against the highest payroll team. So the fact that we managed to achieve this, we had, you know, this is exactly what Moneyball is about. You know, we're the lowest payroll. Um, we're up against the highest payroll. And we, managed, we nearly, nearly, obviously our pitching's let us down. But the fact we made it to the, the championship series, um, the, uh, the AL, um, obviously, league series is fantastic. So I'll skip through to that and I'll meet you back there. So we're back and um, there's a couple of things to go over. So in terms of the um, playoffs, the Yankees won over the Nets 4-2. So the Yankees won the World Series after being us out in the League Series, which is very unfortunate because obviously, you know, that was... It was certainly there for us to win if we didn't have a couple of, you know, terrible pitching games. Um, really is a shame, obviously, because we, we might well have been able to beat the Nets. The Mets, sorry, not the Nets. Um, who do have a great team, yes. Kodai Senga as well. Um, he's a three-time All-Star now, wow. Um, every year he's been an All-Star. Um, but... Uh, it wasn't to be, so we just got to move on to next season. We do have fifty-three million available, so we have plenty of money available. However, now going <laughs> to looking at things, also what I will say is personnel-wise, we've had a lot of retirements and um, positions leaving. So in terms of, I need, definitely need a new scouts. So. Obviously, we need an actual scout and we need uh, scout ratings. So, I actually prefer highly favoured tools. Um, we did have Kubota before. However, is he even available? It doesn't even look like he's here, actually, um, unless he's already joined the team. So realistically, you I mean you're looking at what Rick Hahn here is not a bad option at all. We got Steve Demescus. You know, I might go for him actually. He is young, legendary at scouting amateurs, excellent major leagues, outstanding minor league um, scouting. Not too happy about the international because you know that is something I do like for them to have good. But um, I'll certainly take it. So it'll be Steve Demescus I'm bringing in, and then team trainer. Obviously, go to. Uh, trainer ratings here I want prevent arms to be good however I know we had he doesn't seem to be here unfortunately Jeff Collins before we did have unless he's already been signed which is really unfortunate because he was actually very very good for us um, but I don't I don't mind the look of Alfredo Rivas here he's legendary in prevention of all types of injuries
Um, yes, rehab isn't quite great once they get there, but if he prevents the injuries, that's good enough for me. Obviously, the fatigue recovery, fatigue recovery isn't exceptional there, but I'm um, more than happy with that. Obviously, I'll have to go through and do a lot of the minor leaguers. I've already, obviously, as you can see, I've already sent out a few offers just to players that were um, leaving from here. I couldn't offer re uh, renewals to a lot of people that just weren't interested. They wanted to move higher up the organisation, so I have done so with that. I mean, to be honest, I probably should have been thinking about it beforehand, but it just jumped up on me, and I had a load of people... Um, coming in leave so obviously you can see here so see review of the goals um yeah he didn't expect us to make the playoffs this year but we did um obviously we've already done the profit we're increasing fan engagement is lagging i don't know what else we could have done in regards to this to be honest um <laughs> So he still wants us to. So for next year, um, wants to achieve a winning record, reach the World Series in the next four seasons, keep improving our international amateur finds, drafted players, bring in a manager with better rotation. That is reputation. Sorry, that's probably something I won't do. Very happy with our manager so far. Um, obviously we did have that blip last year, but um, he's a previous manager manager of the year award winner. So I don't feel like, you know, I need to do so. He's done that under our tenure, so or tenor tenure uh, <laughs> and uh so i'm very very happy with his job that he's been doing himself so very happy with everything here the one thing i will say is so obviously going into sort of you know my league is we got paulinho is now the number 12 prospect he's dropped a little bit but he's still looking fantastic um obviously these are osa though we don't have our scouts um currently so when our head scout comes in we'll give them all uh another scout just to look where they're at because a few of these players are lower according to osa than they were in our scouts so i will jump into salary arbitration quickly because it looks like our salary is going to rocket unfortunately so as much as you know looking at players we do you know we we have to um players we have sort of you know to continue doing their role you know um we're going to be paying a lot more money for that so really not good to see that all these players all of these bullpen pieces have been having great great years for us and now their their salaries are jumping unfortunately i say fortunately we want him to have a good season but zach jason didn't have a great year so um his doesn't jump up by much in arbitration same with chris matt who i feel like i might not even keep on actually um, he's one of those I might release as much as he is a good pitcher and was great when he came up actually here. Um, and was great in AAA. Okay, I need to have a but you know, to pay five and a half million for him is not ideal. Um, John Schreiber, 2.4 is not that bad. But Adrian Morahon, they want 12.1 million. He did have a fantastic season. He put up 3.3 war. He Proved from last year, a 54 foot minus, a 73 foot minus the year before. He's been fantastic for us ever since he came in. Obviously, we did that trade. He's been all star back to back years here. But is he worth 12.1 million for a bullpen piece? Especially as the Oakland A's. Um, I will try to obviously not let any of these guys go to arbitration by offering contract extensions. So, for example, Estuary Ruiz here. Obviously, Bellinger is actually. What I will mention is Bellinger obviously did not execute his player option, which I do not blame him for doing so. He put up 2.8 war, um, great defense in center field, and um, about league average um, with the bats. Massively improved from last year, where he was, you know, a bit meh for us, but still not quite as good as he was for Chicago. So it was a great contract we did get to bring him in. Obviously, this year 2.8 war on four and a half million contract. Um, Obviously, it's a shame he has, he has. We have to let him go, but um, we'll see what he does. One actually now, but I would imagine, yeah, four years, ten million a year is not something I want to do. We've got too many players. I do need, I do want to give out long contracts too. So unfortunately, that's not someone I will be looking to do that with. Oscar Colas here is obviously we may have to let him go. There's quite a few players here. Um. 
Christian Pache. Who I always, always forget we, we do still have. His bat just never came around. Um, which is a real shame. As much as he was a great, um, he's a great, great defender here. He, his bat just isn't good enough. Although Bellinger is going, is he a bat? Do I want to keep him as a defensive option at centre field? Um, obviously got Shea Langoliers here, who's been demoted to the bench now, and his put up a negative WAR last year. He may be someone I'd just end up letting go, really, to bring up an, in another cheap backup catcher. Um, Ken Waldchuk as well here. Um, another good year. Well, he's put up over six WAR for us. Um, over three years. Um, Eshu Ruiz obviously was not good this year. Um, minus 0 0.6 WAR. After a good, re really good couple of years for us. Put up nearly eight war there. Um, Zach Jackson four point two. Anyway, so what I will do is I'll go through all the salary arbitration probably. And I'd probably jump back to you guys at the start of free agency in the next episode, where we go through all the whole of the off season. Um, sort of my plans really are. You know, we have plenty of money. Um. Maybe try and get some longer term contracts tied up to some of these guys here. If you can drop some comments down below what you think I should do with these guys, really. I mean, if I look at, so for example, as I if I want to offer him a contract, he doesn't. If I ask for a, say, a 10 year deal, what's his long term demand? I mean, yeah, 40 million for his free agent years. Do I think he's going to be on 32 million to 32 and a half million arbitration? I mean, this type of contract is not ideal. <laughs> um, obviously, I, go, I can go through and have a look at some of these other guys. Or oh, I've had Jack Moss um, of contract extension for a. Let's go for another 10 year deal for him. Apply long term contract demand. He wants 30 million for his free agent years. Do I think. The thing is, these aren't really team massively team friendly contracts. 190 million um, for a first baseman, really. Um, and I don't know how he's going to turn out. Will he, you know, will he um, sort of turn over and sort of um, not live up to how he's been going so far? Where, for example, Daniel Susak here. He's 34. We can get until age 32. Buy out two years of his free agent year. Two of his free agent years here. Where he will be on most 11 million a year. And this is someone who was the AL Division Series MP, MVP this year. He's great in the playoffs for us. But 108 OPS plus and one war over the year. Yes, he came in late. But um, he's a great bat for us. Great great ratings here as well. Um, that is more of a team friendly deal. Is that something I want to go with? You know, I can go through and have a look at a few of these other guys, you know, see what they want. Obviously, Chapman's here till 2028, so there's no worry with him. Um, for example, what about Gage Workman? So he's, realistically, he's our shortstop of the future. I don't see us bringing in ever, any other shortstop. Um, let's go with a eight-year demand to his 34. So that, he wants 19 million, 2026. 22, 25, 28 million at the most. And that buys out four of his free agent years at 28 million. Is that massively team friendly? Realistically not. Um, especially when he's on 800,000 at the moment. Next year he'll still be on league minimum. There's no real reason, reason to pay him 19 million next year, I don't think. Um, so... If you can drop some comments down below, you know, what you think I should do, what what sort of direction you think I should go with. And obviously there's potential for us to move to Las Vegas for the start of next year. So potentially we could look to make a couple of splashes, um, tie some players down for, you know, for moving over to Las Vegas for the long term. So let me know in the comments down below what you think I should do. And I'll take that into account and take that into mind for the off-season episode that I should look to get up over the weekend. So, um, obviously, you know, please drop a like on the video, you know, subscribe if you like the content. And I'll see you in the next one.